गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम प्रदीप कुमार शर्मा एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ अ थ्री लेक्चर सीरीज बेस्ड ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू मैक्सवेल इक्वेशंस एंड इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक थ्योरी in this series we will cover the following topics फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज प्रोपोगेशन ऑफ ई एम वेव इन फ्री स्पेस द थर्ड टॉपिक दैट वी विल डिस्कस इज ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ एनर्जी एंड मोमेंटम इन ई एम वेव and the last topic that we will discuss is maxwell equations in dielectric and conducting medium for this series there is a prerequisite for basic vector algebra and the elementary results of electricity and magnetism so let us start our first lecture today with the first topic that is introduction to maxwell equations so we will start with this chapter so the behavior of time dependent electric and magnetic field or you can say electromagnetic field is described by a set of four partial differential equation these equations are called maxwell field equations
after the name of Maxwell. These equations are the results of experimentally proved result so these are the results or you can say expression for experimentally proved results so we will write these four equations for a particular medium let us say that the medium that we are going to consider is isotropic and homogeneous when we say that the medium is isotropic it means that the properties are not changing with direction when we say that the medium is isotropic it means the properties which properties we'll say that electromagnetic properties such as dielectric constant or you can say refractive index so these properties electromagnetic properties are not changing with direction So such a medium in which the properties are not changing with direction is called isotropic and this homogeneous means again there is uniformity so the properties such as mu and epsilon this mu is called absolute permeability of the medium and this epsilon is called absolute permittivity of the medium then these properties are same at all points so a medium which is isotropic and homogeneous in that medium we can write these maxwell equations so we are going to write these maxwell equations for a medium which is isotropic and homogeneous when we say isotropic we mean to say that the properties such as refractive index are not changing with medium and when we say homogeneous it means the properties again the electromagnetic properties such as permeability and dielectric constant are same at all the points so we will change the slide and in the second slide we are going to discuss these maxwell equations one by one so the first equation that we can write is del dot d equals to rho this equation can also be written as divergence d is equal to rho. so this del dot d is referred as divergence d the second equation is del dot b is equal to zero or you can also refer this as divergence b equals to 0 the third equation is del cross e is negative of del b by del t so this equation can be written as curl of e is negative of del b by del t so this del cross e is referred as curl of e and the last equation the fourth equation is del cross b is mu j plus del d divided by del d so we have these four equations 
so let me name these equations this as equation number one this as equation number two this one is equation number three and this one is equation number four so in addition to these four equations we have two supplementary equations as well what are those so i will write in addition to these four equations we have two supplementary equations these supplementary equations are following the first equation is d is equal to epsilon times e and b is equal to mu times h so let me name this as equation number 5 and this as equation number 6 so next we are going to understand what are the physical quantities that are involved in these equations so the first quantity that is in these equations is rho and this rho is called free charge density this basically refers as charge per unit volume the second quantity is this d and this d is called electric displacement vector this capital e in this equation is electric field intensity the quantity b in these equations is magnetic field induction the quantity h is referred as magnetizing force sometimes it is also known as magnetizing intensity so both are the same the next quantity that is in these equations is j this j is referred as current density there is one more quantity which is sigma and this sigma is called electrical conductivity so these are the various terms that have been used in these equations this two quantities are further remaining which are not listed here and i will write those quantities over the next slide two next quantities are one is epsilon this epsilon is written as the product of epsilon 0 and epsilon r and this epsilon is referred as absolute permittivity of medium on the same basis this mu can also be written as mu 0 mu r and this mu is absolute permeability of the medium the quantities that i am marking by red color this epsilon 0 and this mu 0 these are the values of permeability and permittivity for free space these are again absolute values of permittivity and permeability
of free space you can call free space or you can also call this as vacuum so these are the quantities which have been used in these maxwell equations so next we will focus on writing the maxwell equations and signifying them one by one so the first equation is del dot d is equal to rho so as i tell earlier that this d can be written as epsilon times e so writing this d in terms of epsilon and e this equation will become del dot e is equal to rho by epsilon so these two forms del dot e is equal to rho by epsilon or the other one that we have used del dot d is equal to rho these two forms of these equations i will name as equation 1 and 2 these are differential form as there is differential operator del used in these equations so these are differential form and these are differential form of a law which is gauss law in electrostatics so these equation 1 and 2 are referred as the differential form of gauss law in electrostatics so we can also write this equation this gauss law in electrostatics in an another form which is called integral form so for that we will use this quantity del dot e we will replace that as e dot ds so this e dot ds is electric flux so this electric flux is 1 upon epsilon time of charge enclosed charge enclosed within the surface over which this integral has been taken so this equation equation number 3 is referred as integral form of gauss law you can also write it in one other form if you take this epsilon over here then this epsilon e will become d so this can also be written as d dot ds is equal to charge enclosed so these equations equation number 4 and equation number 3 these are equation number 3 and 4 these are called integral form of gauss law in electrostatics integral form of gauss law in electrostatics so this is the first maxwell equation which is written in the form of equation number 1 and equation number 2 and these equation number 1 and 2 are nothing but the differential form these equation can also be expressed in the form of integral integration form so that's why these are called integral form of gauss law in electrostatics so we will jump to next slide to see further the three equations so let us jump to equation number 2 this equation number 2 is del dot b equals to 0 if you replace this b with mu times h this equation will be modified as del dot h equals to 0 so these are the two forms del dot b equal to 
or del dot h equals to zero these two equations are differential form i will say equation number three and equation uh, three and four we have already used so i will name it as five and six so equation five and six are the differential form of gauss law in magnetism again these equations are in differential form so these equation can also be written in integral form so you can replace this del dot b with surface integral of b dot ds so this integral of b dot ds will give you zero so this equation in which we have converted this del dot b with surface integral of b dot ds we have utilized gauss divergence theorem so this equation 7 signifies this equation 7 signifies the absence of mag magnetic monopoles that is the source of magnetic field which is magnetic monopole can never exist so the absence of monopoles magnetic monopoles is signified by this equation 7 so while converting these del dot b to integral of b dot ds we have utilized gauss divergence theorem so the third equation we will jump to third equation which is equation maxwell equation number 3 is nothing but faraday law so this is faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so this faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction is written in the form of del cross e is equal to minus del b by del t so this curl e is equal to minus del b by del t is again the differential form of faraday's law again we can convert this del cross e to line integral using stokes theorem so if we use the stokes theorem we can convert this curl e into line integral of e dot dl so in integral form this equation is written in this form so equation 8 is referred as differential form of gauss law in electrostatics and this equation number 9 is your integral form so i will write that equation number 8 is differential form of faraday's law of electromagnetic induction while next equation which is number 9 is nothing but the integral form of the same law so this is your third maxwell equation which is nothing but faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction now we will jump to the next slide to explain the significance of 
एम्पियर मैक्सवेल लॉ सो दिस इज फोर्थ मैक्सवेल इक्वेशन एंड दिस इज नथिंग बट मॉडिफाइड फॉर्म ऑफ एम्पियर्स लॉ इन मैग्नेटो स्टैटिक्स तो मैक्सवेल मॉडिफाइड दिस इक्वेशन विच इज एम्पियर्स लॉ इन मैग्नेटो स्टैटिक्स एंड इन द मॉडिफाइड फॉर्म दिस इक्वेशन इज रिटर्न एज डेल डॉट बी इज म्यू जे प्लस डेल डी बाय डेल डी so this equation is modified form of ampere's law sometimes it is also referred as ampere maxwell law equation 10 is known as modified form of ampere's law or ampere maxwell law so these are the four maxwell equations and out of these four equations i will conclude that equation 1 and 2 are only space dependent while equation 3 and 4 are both space as well as time dependent so to conclude i will again write the four equations the first equation is del dot d is equal to rho you can also write it in the form del dot e is equal to rho by epsilon the second equation was del dot b equals to 0 and it can be written as del dot h equals to 0 third equation is del cross e is equal to minus del b by del d or it can also be written as del cross e is equal to minus mu del h by del d and the last equation is del cross h is mu this j can be written as or h will be written as mu into h b is written as mu into h so it will be mu j plus epsilon del e by del t So this is the fourth equation. The mu will be get cancelled out from both sides. So you will be left with del cross h is j plus epsilon del e by del t. So as you can see, equation number one and equation number two are only space dependent, as we have only del term, which is a function of space coordinates x, y, and z. So del dot d and del dot b, these equation one and two are only space dependent. While this third equation and this fourth equation contains both coordinates, that is the space coordinates x, y, and z, as well as time. So since it is a function of space as well as time, so I have written that equation three and four are space as well as time dependent. So in the light of this. we have in the today's class understood the maxwell equations in both integral and differential forms i hope it is clear to all of you thank you so much